Hey everyone, it's Jim from Vows and More, an online vintage tube store. And today in Tube Lab number 33, we're going to talk about tube synergy. We're going to use the Wilsonton R8 integrated amp for our purpose, simply because it's the amplifier I have in my system right now. And it's a good example. But first, caution everyone, electronics and tube amplifiers can have very high voltages present, which can be lethal. Exercise extreme caution when working around them. Always consult a professional technician when in doubt. And if you're enjoying these videos, please hit the like button and subscribe. Okay, so I've done a lot of tube reviews, but I don't think we've talked much about how tubes interact with each other. Our goal today is to figure out a good general approach to finding a set of tubes for an amplifier that once combined work together to produce a superior sound to any one single tube. We'll call that selecting for synergy. A lot of electrical factors are in play all at the same time, but luckily you can get excellent results without ever looking at a tube data sheet or analyzing a circuit with test gear, though those things can help. We use three simple tubes, tools. First, we'll make a wee flow chart of our tubes. Let's take a look at one. We looked at one a few tube labs ago. And it basically, it just lays out our equipment and the tubes we use in it. And I'm gonna put a link below for that. And of course, under information in the store, you always have access to the links as well. Second, we need a score sheet to keep track of how, how we perceive the sound changes that we made. And this is actually one of my score sheets that I used for um, for this tube lab. And this is the score sh type of score sheet I use when I'm reviewing tubes. And we'll, we will look at that in a minute. And again, I'll put a link below so you can, you can go ahead and use my score sheet if you want. But lastly, and most importantly, we'll use a highly evolved, incredibly accurate tool that all humans have in pairs. Yep, you guessed it, our ears. And to be more accurate, our ears and our brain interface, because of course our ears pick up the acoustic waves, the sound waves, but it's our brain that interprets what we're hearing. And it can take some practice and time before we really have a good sense or understanding of what we're actually hearing. So, we're going to assess the results by listening critically to our choices, and then we make some notes as we go. Okay, how do I start? First, what are your favorite types of music to listen to? I use two very broad but very different categories. Type A would be acoustic, small ensemble, jazz, folk, or classical. And in type B, we've got rock and roll, Prague, electronic, large-scale classical. You get the picture. Wall of sound, wall of sound style. And in general, you probably are going to have higher powered gear, uh, higher powered, lower efficiency speakers. This is just general. Maybe you've got some small bookshelves and you like to listen to loud rock and they work for you. But in general, you're going to, if you want a wall of sound, you're going to, you're going to need bigger speakers. And we'll see why all of this is important in a minute. Okay, let's start with the tube lineup. And let's just back out a little bit so you can see everything. Now I have two complete systems, an analog system with a table and vinyl, of course. And the, the, some audio files will have tape. And I always wanted to get into tape. One of these days I'll tell you my tape story. It goes way back to when I was 17 years old. But anyways, that's for another day. Let's do the digital side. Let's just presume we have a really good feed on the digital side. In my system, I've got a control line stage preamp. And in fact, I've talked about the various uh, prototype, well, two of them that I have. They're in previous tube labs. And from there, we go into the stereo integrated amplifier, the R8 Wilsonton. Wilsonton R8. Now I have found that I get better quality sound driving the Wilsonton with my high quality preamp. And that's not unusual folks, that's a fairly common thing. 
Paul at PS Audio, one of my gurus, talked, has talked about this in the past a number of times, and he said, it shouldn't be so. The, the, adding an extra piece of gear in front of a piece of gear that you don't actually need in front of that piece of gear should not make the sound quality better, but it does in many cases. So if it does, it is, right? Uh, and from the, from the R8, I go into some very efficient 93 dB open baffle speakers that suit my style, my primary style of listening. Okay, now you can make one of these things up. I'm going to, I'll put a link below, uh, or you can just st steal my design and, and make up your own, whatever. But the important thing is you mark in the tube types that you're using. Now, you may have noticed that there's two different distinctly two different distinctly different tubes in the control line stage preamp. So I can run a 6 or 12 SN7 or I can run an E80CC. Very similar amps. In fact, I'm actually working on uh, a kit for both of them. They'll be very similar circuits, same case, very similar top plates. This of course has an 8 pin octal and this has a 9 pin miniature. But they're very different sounding tubes, even though they're in the same circuit. And we're going to talk about that in a minute. Okay, let's put that aside. I've got my listening notes, but I, I'll run through the actual tubes. It's more fun looking at tubes, isn't it? We'll run through the tubes, and we'll talk about what, what I heard. Now, it's always I always enjoy getting comments, good comments. Um, and I, I only get good comments. Um, sometimes you get some constructive criticism, and that's okay. But I got a great comment on, I think, Sunday. Uh, somebody commented on a YouTube, and they said, Jim, what are you running right now in your R8? And I thought, wow, that's a great question for this moment, because I was running what I thought was this great uh, set of tubes. And I thought, that synergy. And I thought, oh. That's Friday's tube lab. So I, I made some notes to him as to what we what was what was in the R8, and I started writing the tube lab in my head right away. So at the front end, in the tw six or twelve SN7 preamp, I've got this gorgeous Sylvania mil spec from 1967. It's the tube that actually got me started building the prototype preamps. Because this is a 12 volt heater. And you can't sub it in a 6SN7 um, preamp. I ended up designing and building uh, a preamp specifically for it that could take either the 6 volt 6SN7 or the 12 volt 12SN7. Hence the name of the preamp. This is a a wonderful tube. All the Sylvania 6SN7s and 12SN7, same tube, just different vol voltage for the heater, are wonderful sounding tubes. There's slight differences in each generation, and the older you get, the um, slightly better and more refined the sound gets, and of course, the more and more expensive the tubes get, because they get rarer and harder to find matches. I specialize in the Sylvanias, because from the very beginning I adored this tube. What does it give the sound? It's adding lots of even harmonics, it fills out the sound, that, in fact, that that is primarily what tubes give us, is that full, rich sound that solid state can't do. They're also, you know, in my opinion, they're, they're sexy, they're fun, they're bright, they're hot, and they're a big pain in the ass because, you know, tubes are not perfect. They, you know, they'll, they'll develop faults. Um, I... I spent a lot of time testing customers' tubes and a lot of time listening to them before I ship, and then the damn things will get there, and, you know, the post office or the airline dropped the tube from 12 feet. So I, anyways, I'm ranting. I wrap and box for a 6-foot drop because who can who can anticipate a 12-foot drop or a 16, 12, 6-foot drops? Who knows what they're up to? Anyways, um... And tubes can just stop working properly. It's, you know, they'll get noisy. But with luck, um, tubes can last, they can last years, they can even last decades. I can remember my father's uh, RCA console, which was an absolute, it was a big beast. It was a glorious sounding tube amp. Um, 
we must have gone a decade without touching the tubes. Um, so, anyways, so that's our that's what the preamp is adding. Next, we've got we're in the R8 now, and the first tube is the high gain preamp tube, the 6SL7, and this Sylvania from the 1950s, there's a gray plate, there's a black plate, there's a mil spec, they're all about the same. For the, for the listening tests I use the gray plate, and this is an outstanding tube. It, it brings clarity. It's got, with clarity comes sound stage. It does everything really well. It has a little tiny bit more bass than um, other 6SL7s. I'm not talking about muddy, sloppy, you know, boom, boom, boom bass. I'm talking just a little bit forward. Next we go into um, the phase inverter and the driver stage. And in that circuit in the R8, uh, because of how it's set up, it's a quite a unique uh, phase inverter circuit. Not original, but just fairly unusual. Um, we we lose about 50% of the gain potential because of the way the circuit's designed. Um, but that doesn't mean that we're, we're not driving those output tubes. It just means that we're a little lower power than we would be otherwise. But we don't have a phase inverter tube. So there's there is no, typically we'd have a 12AU7 in here. And, and then we'd have a driver, a pair of driver tubes. Anyways, I found on the R8 that the Sylvania GTAs and GTBs, this is a 6SN7 of course, that they sound wonderful in that spot. I've tried other tubes. There are some budget tubes that'll get by. The G does a great job as well, um, but I keep returning to the Sylvanias. So they don't do a lot to the sound signature. You need a good tube in that slot. I've tried inexpensive tubes and it really detracts from the sound. But now we're in the output stage. We're in the output tubes. And for my style of listening, class, what I call the type A, small ensemble acoustic, the Svetlana EL34, this is the tube for me. Now, what, what does that give us sound-wise? It gives us a lot of warmth in the mid-range. It does everything really well. The EL34 is a little weak on the bass side. It's just typical of the type. In fact, tube amps in general are a little weak on the bass side. That's where solid state thumps, thumps us. Solid state doesn't do anything else good, <laughs> but they do. It does do bass well. So one of the solutions um, some of my customers have done is that they put in high quality subs into their system, one or two, or one large or two smaller subs, and um, and they've been liking it. And of course, if you've got a powered sub, you've got a solid state amp. I've never heard of a a two powered sub, though I'm sure there are some. So. Don't jump all over me for that one. <laughs> so this is this is probably the, the most affordable, um, highest quality vintage EL34 out there. These Svets. If we wanted to go to the ultimate, we would drop in a Mullard. And I'm going to actually talk about these in a minute. So. Let's just leave it at that, that this is one of the one of the best sounding Yale 34s ever made. Now, this is a vintage Muller, of course, from the 1960s. This was pure heaven. This was synergy. Now, what did I do shifting around tubes to see what would happen? Okay, so let's drop the GE 6SL7 in here. It's a gorgeous looking little tube. It's got these lovely nickel colored plates. It's a it's a budget 6SL7. They're fairly common. They're very affordable. It took back the detail that we found with the Sylvania a little bit. We lost a little bit of sound stage. It was definitely a bit of a detraction. Okay. What else could we do? Well, we could put a melt 6SL7 in. Now these are more expensive still. They're hard to keep in stock. What would be the differences? Well, they're both from the 1950s. They're very similar sounding tubes. We're touch bass forward, 
we would bring the base back a little bit with the melts tube to more of a flat presentation. Either one of these tubes gives us that lovely EL34 warmth in the mid-range that a lot of, uh, of tube amp owners just adore and love. Okay, what else did I try? Well, for type, type B music lovers, rock and rollers, prog rock, wall of sound type, you're going to want the higher powered output tube that the R8 can take. It's one of those, it's not that, I'm, that's, it's fairly common actually that you can have a power amp that, that will take a couple of different types. It's not that unusual. It's, it's not common though. We would take out the L34 and we drop in the Svetlana 6550C and this is my favorite KT88 type. And we'd get, we get an improvement to the bass right away. We get a bit more bass. It would be a little clearer, but we get a little bit of an edge to the music that the KT88 types, the beam powered Tetros. Remember the EL34 is a pentode. It's actually a very different design. In circuit, they work fairly similarly, but the structure of how it's actually made and how the components are wound inside is different. So we get really a dramatic change when we do that. So we've got more of an edge, more of a drive, we've got more power. We can handle lower efficiency speakers. What else could we do? Well, we could take out that, that preamp tube and change, actually, the preamp over to the ADCC. Now, this tube is one of the, this is the Philips SQ special quality. This is one of the greatest 12AU7 types ever made. It's not a sub for the 12AU7. It's basically a higher powered um, industrial uh, studio version of the 12AU7. Whether it was meant to replace it specifically, I'm not sure. It will actually sub in some circuits. You've got to be careful. It draws a lot more heater current than the 12AU7. And I've done a video on this, so you can actually go back and look it up. Um, but I've got a preamp that was designed specifically for this tube. It was something I've always wanted to do. In fact, I'm actually working on kits for the 6 or 12 SN7 pre and for the E80CC uh, preamp. It's, it's going slow, folks, so the store is very busy and I don't have a lot of free time to do um, development work. But what does that give us? Gives us what does it give us uh, sound-wise? Well, this is a much edgier tube than the 6SN7. It's got a lot of clarity and detail, and it's got less in the way of those extra harmonics. Plug that sucker in here, and, we're, and our music's going to get even more towards, yeah, I was going to say um, less, well, let's, let's call it less smooth and a little bit more edgier. So you can see with, um, with a very simple preamp that only has a couple of tubes in the, uh, one tube on each channel in the front end and a fairly simple integrated amplifier that you can get fairly large changes in your sound signature by the tubes you choose. Now, if you want quality sound, you've got to choose quality tubes. So let's just imagine that I was using the original Chinese EL34, total crap. I wouldn't even review them, I threw them out. You can't say, I'm going to have, I'm going to do this step by step. I'm going to have a great preamp and crappy tubes in my power amp, or I'm going to have um, great speakers and a cheap Chinese amplifier, and the R8 is not a cheap one, but I'm talking about a cheap one, and I'm going to live with that, it's going to sound great. It won't work that way, unfortunately. Everything is integrated with everything else. Everything matters. And that's what we're talking about here. You want to get matches that bring that synergy that will bring you close to Nirvana. And that's everybody's, every audiophile's goal, and it's what we're all hunting all the time. Okay. 
enough blah blah blah. Some really nice tubes came in this week. Let's take a look at them. These have been hard to keep in stock. The Svetlana 6550Cs, people love these tubes. I love them, it's my favorite KT80 type. I got 20 tubes in this week in separate orders. And they, they tested good, but I only managed to match up three quads. That's, and that's actually a fairly good rate for matching up quads. Of course, I had a huge pile of singles already in stock that I threw into the mix. The neat thing is they actually came with some original boxes. Look at that. There's the Cyrillic. There's the orig one of the logos that Svetlana used, the Flying C. And in the, in the Russian alphabet, the Cyrillic C is RS, right? Svetlana. Makes sense? Yeah. And there's the other logo, the big stylized S, right? Anyways, I love original boxes. I actually send out original boxes if I have them. It's just fairly rare to have them. And what else came in? We were looking at this. Let's look at this in detail. This, this is one of the greatest EL34s ever made. It's the mu original mullet from the 1960s, the XF2 series. Let's see if we can see on the side here. Can you get that on camera? It's hard. It's etched. The code is etched at the factory. You should see an XF2 and then a capital B and then the date code. Capital B is Blackburn, England, right? That's the plant. And I'm always working on bringing these in as... Um, I, I, I'm trying to build match quads, basically. And um, it's almost a hobby. There's so much work to bring in one or two tubes at a time. But I'm getting close, hopefully, to another quad. Unfortunately, premium vintage tubes have gone up in the last six months about 50%. Yep, yeah, you heard it right, 50%. Some of them have doubled and tripled. So unfortunately, my price for um, for expensive tubes, have they've had to go up because my wholesale price has just gone up so much. But I do this more for fun than anything because what what value is it to have one or two uh, Mullard um, EL34s? You can't. Almost everybody needs a match quad. That's typically how they're running them in their power amps. So for me, it's just fun to, to put together a whole bunch of singles and pairs and eventually get them all matched up. And I've got a quad. Anyways, Ooh, that was close. <laughs> let's not, let's put a, let's put a stopper here. Let's not drop that. Okay, if you stay till the end, Here's some discount codes for you. Remember, I've got $20 flat rate shipping around the world. And if your order is $150 or more after discount, the shipping's on me, folks. Stay safe, everyone. This is Jim from Valves and More signing off. Cheers, everyone.